According to the latest data from the 2021 China Statistical Yearbook, the presence of single-generation households has dramatically risen in the last decade, from a rate of 34.17% to nearly half of all households in China, an increase of 15.33%. On the other hand, the percentage of two-generation households have gradually decreased, from 47.83% in 2010 to today's 36.72% showing that the once popular only child families have become a thing of the past. Such changes in family demographics also reflect a greater change going on in China, that of the imminent demographic crisis caused by declining birth rates, resulting in an aging and rapidly declining population. The inevitable economic crises caused by a diminishing workforce and a growing elderly population will prove to be China's greatest challenge yet and the resulting fallout may even undermine the political power of the CCP. If we take a closer look at the data, we can see that the increase in single-generation households is not an isolated issue concentrated in certain states, but rather a nationwide phenomenon experienced throughout China. Within the state, regions with the lowest number of single-generation households already reach percentages of 40% or higher. Among the others, 13 provinces have already surpassed half, such as Jilin, Tianjin, and Inner Mongolia, while single-generation families in Beijing, Shanghai, and Moor account for over 58% of all households. Even the size of China's households have been steadily declining. 40 years ago, the average household size was 4.41, and the beginning of this 21st century saw an average of 3.44 people. By 2020, this number had already dropped to a paltry 2.62 people per household. If we look at China's crude birth rate, the numbers are no better. For every 1,000 people in 2020, China only saw 8.52 births, falling below 10 live births per 1,000 people for the first time in history, setting a record low. During this same period, the natural increase rate, which is the number of births minus the number of deaths, also reached a record low, sitting at an increase of 1.45 per 1,000 people. Factoring in everything else, such as immigration, compared to 2019, China's overall population will only increase by 2.04 million, a 59-year low since 1962. Since the 90s, annual net population increase had stayed above 10 million until 2000, when it fell below that mark at an increase of only 9.57 million. By the first decade of the new millennium, net population increase was only 6.41, with only a sudden spike in 2012 when the net population increase suddenly reached 10.06 million. For a while in 2016, net population increase temporarily shot up due to the implementation of the two-child policy, reaching an increase rate of 9.06 million only for it to then rapidly decrease once more to 7.79 million, 5.3 million, 4.67 million, and then finally today, where it's now sitting at an annual increase of 2.04 million people. Recently, in an interview with China Newsweek, Lu Jiehua, the vice president of the Chinese Demographic Society and a professor at Peking University, expressed to the state-owned news magazine that from the data given to us in the 2021 China Statistical Yearbook, the natural increase rate has probably been the lowest since 1949. If we don't see an increase in population growth anytime soon, we may expect to see negative increase rates in the next few years. Another important number to look at is the total fertility rate, or TFR, which indicates the average number of children a woman gives birth to within the average reproductive age period. According to the UN, a TFR of at least 2.1 is required to maintain a population, also known as the replacement level fertility. A country with a TFR of less than 1.5 is considered to be within the fertility trap, where at that point, positive feedback loops cause the recovery in fertility rates to become near impossible, leading to further decline. If we look at China again, we will see that the TFR is only at 1.3, far below the 2.1 required to sustain a population. While social and cultural changes that can lead to this demographic crisis are to be expected, there is little doubt that the one-child policy previously implemented for decades has played an incredibly major factor in the magnitude of the crisis. 
Not only has the enforcement of this policy caused an innumerable amount of deaths in newborns, artificially dropping the NIR, but the forcing of parents to only have one children has created a major imbalance in the sex ratio, having 37 million more men than women, hindering future reproduction and worsening the already growing issue. With a severely reduced future generation, the issue of the aging population is only making matters worse. As there are not enough able-bodied people to support the growing population of elderly people, faced with all of these population issues, the CCP has introduced the two-child policy in 2016, allowing families to have more children. But it was already too late. While there was an increase in childbirths, the increase was far from enough to solve the problem they faced. As of August of this year, the National People's Congress has once again amended the limitations. And has now officially implemented the three-child policy. However, the vast majority of men and women within the fertility age gap, who are mostly from the 80s and 90s, are only children themselves. As such, each family will have to not only support their one child under increasing economic pressures, but also take care of four elder parents. As such, many couples choose not to have children, and others opt to remain single. As a way to further push the three-child policy, the CCP recently posted an article advising party members and other officials to be role models and take the initiative of raising multiple children, setting an example for everyone else. Due to the sheer novelty and unexpectedness of the post, it immediately went viral in a matter of hours. However, the article was removed the same day, as many of the comments on it were negative and critical of the idea. China's rapid reversal of family planning policies, from enforcing a one-child policy to encouraging multiple children, really goes to show just how problematic the demographic crisis is. To add on to the issues, the aging population creates a larger problem that will put further strain on the country as time goes on. Back in the 60s, China witnessed a baby boom with a total of 239 million births, all attributed to that decade alone. Because of this, large numbers of people are retiring all at once, with over 20 million new retirements each year. This number will only grow as the people born in the 60s begin to retire, contributing to an already growing fiscal deficit. In addition, due to cultural and social changes, most people choose not to live with their parents after they grow up, which is also shown through the increase in one-generation households we have seen earlier. According to a survey conducted on the elderly in China, the number of empty nesters, which are people who do not live with their children, have exceeded 100 million nationwide. Some experts even suggest that this number will triple in the next decade, with 90% of all households consisting of empty nesters. With all of these elderly people living alone, they will have, to varying degrees, many medical and psychological problems. With no one to accompany or take care of them. Day-to-day -day activities may prove to be challenging, and medical care may be less accessible. Recently, on December 13th, an elderly man in Beijing went viral for scolding several nannies in constant succession. The elderly couple were both bedridden and emotionally unstable at the time, and because of work, their only daughter was unable to take care of them. As such, they chose to hire a nanny instead, costing them 6,000 yuan each month. The elderly man's main issue is his inability to see his daughter, further worsening his mental state and causing him to become extremely aggressive and irritable, to the point where the nanny resigned in frustration. Desiring genuine love and affection from loved ones, the only possible solution would be for their daughter to take care of them, which, as we can see, is extremely difficult. As time progresses, the struggles of this Beijing man will become ever more common. As an increasing number of only children become faced with these challenges, another video circulating on the internet shows another side to the struggles of elderly caretaking. In it, we see a middle-aged man struggling to take care of his two sick parents, who require daily trips to the hospital for infusions and checkups. Later in the video, we can see him breaking down in his car as he does not want to let his parents see him suffer. In another case, a police station in Shanghai received an emergency call for a dying old man that had not eaten for three consecutive days. The police immediately arrived to treat the elderly man, but were unable to contact the man's only son. The police later found out that the son had died of a heart attack beforehand, 
and as such, the old man had no one to take care of him, leading him to his near-death crisis. This situation is also furthered by China's rapid urbanization, funneling young people into major cities, leaving the elderly behind in the countryside, which is further led on by the CCP's separate household registration systems for urban and rural areas. If we compare rural and urban areas, 23.81% of the rural population are over the age of 60, with 17.72% of them being over 65. Respectively, these proportions are 7.99% and 6.61% higher than urban areas. Along with the higher degree of aging, rural areas also have weaker infrastructure for elderly services, as well as fewer people working in the service industry. As of now, China's rural subsidies for the elderly vary between 50 to 200 yuan, or around 8 to 32 US dollars per month which is hardly enough to support the retired elderly people who have no other source of income. As a result, many elderly people in rural areas have no choice but to rely on their own labor to earn a meager income despite their old age. Otherwise, they must rely on any children they have to support them financially. However, as we saw earlier, most people born are only children and many have been spoiled by their parents since childhood, learning nothing about filial piety. Consequently, many elderly people are neglected by their children and even abused, resulting in tragic events. Such a case happened in Guangxi, where a 92-year-old woman was locked up in a pigsty for several years by her son and daughter-in-law. She was given very little food and clothing, and was both physically and verbally abused by her own son. It wasn't until the case was exposed by the media did the woman finally get rescued and given medical attention. From the exposed footage, the only exit was barred by an iron gate, and a large bundle of firewood was used to block the gate. Unfortunately, such cases are not rare among rural areas. When the one-child policy was implemented, a common slogan promoted by the CCP in the 80s was, One child is best, the government will take care of the rest. This narrative began to quickly change by the year 2000, when a new slogan became, Retirement can't rely on the government. Such a narrative continued on into 2010, when they urged people to postpone their retirements to support the elderly. It would be no surprise if in 30 years, the CCP chooses to completely abandon all support for the elderly. <laughs> On November 25th, Xinhua News and other official media were authorized to release a report on a discussion done by the Central Committee State Council. In it, the main point was to encourage co-residence between adults and their elderly parents, labeling it as a return to traditional ways of living representative of Chinese culture. As we all know, it is expected that in a standard society, the government takes on the responsibility of the retirement and care of elders through social services. However, the CCP, who has for decades been at the forefront of family planning, is clearly unwilling to take on any responsibility whatsoever for this crisis. With the ever-increasing population of elderly people and the rapid decline of a future generation, it seems highly unlikely that China will be able to turn the situation around in time. 